Hey everyone, good evening and welcome to our public meeting tonight uh, about the hazardous waste management facility license renewal application for Pfizer, formerly a pharmacy and Upjohn company. Uh, glad to have you here with us tonight to learn a little bit about this permit application and get your questions asked. I know it's a beautiful evening out tonight and I appreciate you being on with us. Uh, we've got about, not a big group of people, about 10 people logged in and I'm sure we'll get uh, several more logging in as we get started. Uh, my name is Jim Ostrowski and I work in Eagles Environmental Support Division and I'm going to help moderate tonight's session so you'll hear a little bit from me at the beginning and at the end and I'll be hanging around in the background. Uh, before I turn it over to our staff I just want to run through a few things with you on logistics for the meeting. Uh, all lines are muted at this point. Uh, when we do Q&A I will explain to you how to ask questions just a little bit here. Um, we are also recording this public meeting like we do with all of our public meetings and we'll be putting it up onto our YouTube channel. So you'll be getting an email uh, after this meeting uh, if you left us with your email address and you'll get a link to that when it's available. Also, uh, keep an eye on the chat in the um, in your Zoom toolbar because Christine Grossman is also here with me tonight and she's going to be uh, dropping a few things into the chat that you might find useful, including a link or a way to download the PowerPoint presentation that we'll be sharing. So when we do get to questions, uh, just as a reminder, uh, what happens is that if you have a question, you can type it into the Q&A box and your Zoom toolbar there. That's going to come down to us. Uh, we're going to hold questions until after the session or after the presentation. So if you're not sure if your question will get answered later, you might want to just hold off and drop your question in towards the end. But if you want to drop it in right away, that's fine too. Uh, you can also click the raise hand icon. So if you have a question you'd rather ask it verbally and not type it in, you can click the raise hand icon and we'll do it that way. Um, we do have uh, some people on the phone tonight listening in. So of course you can't see these slides, but if you're on the phone and you have a question, you hit pound two and you hit pound two, that shows me that your hands raised and I will call you by your phone number and I'll unmute your line that way. So again, it's pound two you're on the phone. All right, with that, I'm going to turn it over to our staff who will be presenting tonight. And the first up is Rich Conforti. So Rich, if you want to turn your camera on, you can do so. And um, I think Jeremy is going to share his slides. So go Thanks, ahead. Jim. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I appreciate it. So this purpose of the meeting is to provide an overview of the facilities hazardous waste operations, uh, an outline of the hazardous waste operating license renewal process that we go through and offer an opportunity to bring questions to the Eagle panel, who we've assembled here. Next, Jeremy. So, so a little bit of introductions uh, from the Materials Management Division. Uh, Jeremy Pepin, he's the environmental engineer. And his email address is up there and you'll get to see that later on. I'm Rich Conforti, I'm the Engineering Program Support Unit Supervisor, Jeremy's direct supervisor. We've got Nicole Sanabria, She's a geologist on this project. Krista Hedich, she's a compliance inspector. She does the inspections out of the facility. So our agenda, we'll go over regulatory authority, facility description, license requirements, renewal application process, compliance summary, and then we'll get to the question and answer session. Next. Okay, I'm going to turn it over to Jeremy and we'll start the, the show. Jeremy. Hello, everybody. My name is Jeremy Pepin. Thank you for that, Rich. Um, so starting out, we'll talk about Eagle's regulatory authority. This is from two different sources. Eagle operates under delegation from the United States Environmental Protection Agency to run the Federal Hazardous Waste Management Program, also known as Subtitle C of the Resource Conservation and Recovery Act. And then Michigan also applies for and receives authorization to run its own hazardous waste management program that is equivalent or more stringent than that on the federal level. This is known as Part 111 or Act 451 of 1994. Through Part 111, EGLE is able to regulate the hazardous waste from its point of generation all the way to 
its ultimate point of disposal, and those who manage it along the way, such as the generators, transporters, and treatment, storage, and disposal facilities. I'll pass it over to Krista now to talk a bit about the facility. Krista, you're muted. Thank you, how embarrassing. All right, I'm Krista Hadich, um, Waste Inspector out of Southwest Michigan. If you are from Kalamazoo, familiar with the area, you're probably familiar with the Pfizer uh, campus, but they are located south of the airport uh, at 7171 Portage Road, Kalamazoo. Um, it's, a, it's a pretty big campus. They go from Portage over to all the way over to Sprinkle and on the north. Um, oh, can you leave it? Back on the, thank you. Um, from Romance Road all the way down to center. Um, a couple of the buildings there on the south, just west of the pond, are actually Zoetis, which is formerly part of Pfizer, but now um, I think probably about 10 years ago split off because that's the, the animal veterinary pharmaceutical side of things. Um, so those are separate now. But the rest of that campus is, is Pfizer. And I think while we have the aerial view, it's important to note that of all the buildings, all the manufacturing, everything that's going on here, this license, their Pfizer's hazardous waste operating and storage license is only applicable to one building. So building 388, um, it's noted there on the map. Um, so that's, that's the base of all our subsequent discussions is that one 388 building. Um, can you switch slides now? So 3 day is licensed to store just over 15,000 gallons of hazardous waste. Um, there aren't any, aren't any tanks in that building. So it's all drum, tote, small portable container storage. Um, and waste that are generated throughout the facility, throughout the manufacturing process, uh, then can be stored in 388 for up to one year. Um, actually, of, I think probably a very small portion of the overall wastes are actually sent there for storage. Um, before, before they're sent off-site for actual disposal. Uh, this license also allows Pfizer to accept wastes from off-site from other Pfizer facilities. They only accept Pfizer wastes, but um, they have there's warehousing space, and uh, if off if there's off-spec product or raw materials, they have the option then of shipping that back to this 388 for storage um, prior to disposal. And next slide, and then I think we're going back to Jeremy. Thank you for that, Krista. Uh, just to get more into the technical side of building 388, this is a completely enclosed building designed to prevent any form of run on or run off into the storage area. For those um, who can see the slides, you can see that the loading dock here and the actual containment area here are designed in such a way that the floors are sloped towards sumps. These sumps are completely disconnected from any outside sources of drainage. So any sort of liquids that collect there are going to have to be pumped out and the floors themselves are made out of low porosity concrete and the actual uh, sump drainage areas are lined and or treated in such a way that the hazardous waste cannot interact with the concrete of those areas as well. Moving on to the requirements for hazardous waste operating licenses. Um, the parts that we're going to be talking about are not all of the requirements for the licenses. So just know that there are more than I will be describing here. Uh, to start out, the waste analysis plan covers the procedures used in identifying and confirming that the hazardous wastes are indeed what they were identified as either from a generator who is transporting it to a storage or treatment or disposal facility. Moving on to inspection schedules. This covers any form of inspections that have to be done for the facility, their frequency, 
in their frequency, sorry. And just some examples for Pfizer's facility that would be container inspections to make sure that they aren't damaged in any way during transport or unloading, and also making sure that things like their sumps are working properly and that no buildup has occurred. Next, we have personal training. These regulations cover the specific training and certifications that personnel working with and or managing different hazardous wastes will have to get before they can actually work with that hazardous waste. And then preparedness and prevention. These requirements cover the um, prevention and response to an emergency at the site and also the site's agreements with local um, emergency response and like medical facilities just in case they have to respond to some emergency at the site as well. We've also got um, requirements for contingency plans. These cover the planning done for potential issues that could arise from the management of hazardous waste at the site and also how the facility and site is going to respond or address to those possible issues if they were to occur. Record keeping and reporting is pretty straightforward. Um, it covers the different records that have to be kept on site. And then the reporting is the different reports that have to be developed, um, their frequency, and also if they need to be sent to us for review and acceptance or approval. Finally, we've got the closure plan. This covers the specific tasks to be carried out when the facility will no longer be used to manage hazardous waste and includes the different procedures for verifying equipment and areas are completely clean of hazardous waste and then also the costs for that closure or cleanup as well. Getting a little more specific to this facility that they only use containers to store hazardous waste. They have to meet the requirements for container storage, but not those of like tank or miscellaneous units like some other sites may have to. And the requirements for container storage really covers the different capacities that they can hold, the um, compatibility that the containers have with the waste they'll be storing, any um, stacking restrictions that they may have, the labeling of the containers, and then also the storage time. In terms of environmental monitoring requirements, the way building 388 has been designed has granted Pfizer um, waivers in terms of soil and ambient air monitoring. So the only one that they have to um, do is groundwater monitoring. And then talking about financial assurance, though this is something seen in all licenses, um, this really is site specific and covers the cost of things such as closure, cleanup, or liability protection. And these are in place more in terms of if something happens at the facility that they can't carry out that closure or cleanup, the state can step in and have the funds to accomplish what needs to be done. Uh, part 111 also has requirements for the uh, licensing process itself. This starts at the submittal of the license. So generally, these are required to be submitted at least 180 days before the expiration of the current operating license. And with that submittal to Eagle, that kind of kicks everything off. So when we receive it, it is distributed to the appropriate agencies, such as the EPA, DNR, or local units of government, and also other EGLE divisions for their review and comment. 
And then also at the same time, the project team is going through their completeness review, which this is really a big picture review, making sure that all the relevant parts of the application are there and ready for the later technical review. Once an application receives its um, administrative completeness determination, a public notice is sent out and a meeting like this is held. And I know it's in the timeline, but pretty much in terms of the whole renewal process itself, we encourage public engagement throughout. Uh, moving on from the completeness meeting, we have the technical review. And this is where the project team is really making sure all the information that we've been provided meets the regulatory requirements. And it should be noted, there's very rarely an application that doesn't receive a notice of deficiency during this step of the review, just because of the sheer amount of information that needs to be sent to Eagle. And then also, um, Sometimes just it's kind of hard to figure out something that's just on paper. So that's where the site team itself will go to the site, or sorry, the project team will go to the site and meet with the site team to get eyes on the facility and also discuss anything that may be easier to understand in person. Like the completeness review, once it has been determined to be technically adequate, a public notice is sent out and a public informational meeting is held. Except this time around, there is also a public hearing, which allows parties, interested parties, to come forward and submit um, comments for the record of the renewal process. And then also leads into uh, the public comment period, which generally lasts somewhere from 30 to 45 days. Once this public comment period has been finished, um, the project team develops a responsiveness summary that consolidates all the comments received throughout that public comment period and at the public hearing and their responses to those and any possible conditions that arise from them and send that on to management for review and um, the making of a final decision. Once that final decision is made, notices are sent to the public and those agencies described before and kind of wraps up the whole renewal process. Something to note about public comment. So I did say that we encourage public comment throughout the whole renewal process. Um, but in terms of the public hearing and public comment period that comments go on the official record, um, we can only, sorry, we can only act on those um, comments that have to do with the standards or requirements in law. And just for an example, um, something that we've seen in the past that we can act on is facility operations have increased the amount of truck traffic in the area and subsequently increased traffic delays. So basically we could do something in the application or not the application, the new license to kind of mitigate or prevent that kind of buildup of traffic. And now I'll pass it back to Krista to give us a compliance summary on the site. Yeah, so um, Pfizer has been operating at this location. Well, you know, Pharmacia up down Pfizer has been operating there for many years. Um, gosh, I think more than a hundred, but they were issued their first operating license at this location in 2001. Um, their first renewal then came in 2012 and they submitted, Pfizer submitted this most recent renewal application in June of 2022. Uh, it's important because that 
application was submitted on time. And because it was on time, uh, Pfizer is allowed to continue to operate under that 2012 license um, during this whole renewal process that Jeremy described that um, tends to take a little bit of time. Uh, can you go to the next slide, please? Um, because Pfizer has this operating storage waste license, they have a little bit more oversight than a typical waste generator. And because they only accept their own waste under this license, they have a little less oversight than maybe a, than a typical treatment storage disposal facility. So annual inspections, we're there every year to evaluate compliance with the terms of the, the license. Um, our division shows up unannounced. We go in and do um, visual inspections. We're looking at containers. We're looking at labels. We're looking at you know integrity of the containment, all sorts of things. And then we there's also a records review portion of the inspection where we're going over incoming, outgoing manifests, you know emergency plans, um, waste characterization things. So the whole slew of documentation that supports all the the license conditions. And then um, typically while we're on site as well, we're looking, we're spot checking some of the, the waste generation not covered under the license. Um, if there are violations or issues uh, identified as part of the inspection, those are communicated with either a compliance communication or violation notice. Those are kind of our official letter, letters that are issued through the division. Um, and then Pfizer has the opportunity to make any sort of necessary changes or updates and typically compliance um, can be restored, you know, reached through just communication or a document submittal. Um, but there is the option for follow-up inspections or in a really extreme case, consent orders. Um, as far as the overall facility compliance, currently they're in very good standing. There's, there are no open violations um, with MMD, our division, materials management division. And um, the facilities operating in compliance with all of the the waste rules and regulations. So I think we're going back to Rich or Jim to wrap it up on the next slide. Thanks, Krista. So uh, stay connected. We got to subscribe for updates on the Pfizer former pharmacy and Upjohn's license. Uh, you also have that on the website. So, so, so you people can sign up for get information that'll be sent to you through uh, what we call uh, new, uh, not new, but, uh, gov delivery. So you get an electronic email sent to you to your information. There's also a, a place to sign up there for the official mailing list on our website too, so that you can get things that would come from us and if necessary from Pfizer when there are certain requirements that have to be sent to you guys. So, um, next slide. Okay, staff context, just one more time. And I think uh, Christine put most of those in the web chat for you. Jeremy Pepin, myself, Rich Conforti, Nicole Sanabria, and Krista Hedich. And now we get to the question and answer session and uh, Jim will take over. All right, thanks, Rich. So um, yeah, we're gonna just, if you have questions tonight, please type it into the question box. I don't see any questions in there right now. So if you have a question, please let us know. You can either Type your question into the Q&A box. Um, our team is here to answer your questions as best we can. Um, also, you can click the raise hand icon and I can unmute you to ask your question that way if you'd like. Uh, a couple of people are on the phone. For those people on the phone, if you hit pound two on your phone, again, pound two, that'll raise your hand on my end and I'll unmute you so you can ask your question. Um, while we're waiting, just wanna point you to the chat you will find a lot of good links and contact information in the chat that you might want to check out, including um, a link to the facility website where you can find a lot of the information that was sent over or that we talked about tonight. Also, there's a link to click on how to subscribe to this, um, how to subscribe to the facility mailing list that we have. It's not a mailing, it's an email listserv type we call it. So if you subscribe to it, you'll get an email for any updates, including when the permits are issued. Uh, public comments and things like that related to this to this site. So I advise you if you're interested in keeping up to date to please click on there and sign up for that. Um, while we're waiting for questions, I mean, I, I want to ask one question for the team and I'll have um, Krista and Jeremy, if you guys turn your cameras back on for questions. Thank you. Um, 
One question I had that maybe you can answer was, Jeremy, you had on your slide that showed the process for um, the whole process. In there, you talked about when there's going to be um, another public comment period and information session. For this application, when do you expect that will be? Or like, what's how long do you think, or when do you think that might be? Well, so basically we're doing the technical review right now and trying to wrap that up. Uh, theoretically, it could be anywhere from a month to maybe two. It all just kind of depends on the uh, technical review process and kind of the back and forth that would come from any sort of notice of deficiencies. So if there's no kind of back and forth, it could be a lot sooner, whereas if there is, it could be later. Okay. So this summer, probably it may, maybe end of the summer. Um, if you want to know, if somebody wants to know when that occurs, so they don't miss the opportunity to comment. Uh, what's the best way to do that, to, to know about that? Um, so we'll be noticing that the same way we noticed this meeting basically in a public newspaper on our websites and also through our official mailing list. Um, I'm trying to think if there were any other ways that we had noticed those, but yeah, those are the main ones. Mm -hmm. All right. Do you mind going back to the slide where it has the contact names on it again, the oh, contacts, yeah. just so we'll, we'll leave that up there. And yeah, and again, if you, um, subscribe to that email list that's in there you'll get an email when it goes up for comment like that's what jeremy was referencing so get that way well team i don't see any um questions in our question box so it doesn't mean you might not have questions if you have questions you know you don't feel comfortable asking them in this forum again you can email any of the staff listed up here on the screen um, and they will get back to you with an answer as best they can. Jeremy, Rich, Nicole, or Krista. Um, again, Jeremy is kind of the main contact, so you can ask him. And uh, yeah, if you look in the ch chat also, Christine dropped a copy of the presentation. So if for some reason you missed something, you want to go back and look at some of those diagrams again, you can just download that presentation. If you're having trouble downloading it, just send me an email back or send um, any of the staff here an email and ask it for it, and we can, we can send that out to you. All right, well, let's wrap this up. Um, Rich, did you have anything else you want to add before I do my closing comments? Uh, no, Jim, we did just get an anonymous person saying congratulations or compliments to the presenters, which I agree. They both, they all did a good job. Um, Jeremy's first time out here. So kudos to him for doing that. <laughs> you know, the, uh, the process is, uh, is a little long and arduous, but uh, he's getting through it. And it's good to have Chris on the team too. Yes, right on. Thank, thanks, team, for your presentation tonight. Um, after this session, um, we will be sending an email to you with some links. Uh, also, you'll find in that email a link to a survey for this event. You know, we're trying to do the best we can um, with these public meetings and information sessions, so we appreciate any comments you might have uh, related to them. Also, when you when I end the webinar tonight, you'll see something pop up. The survey will pop up that way too. So take a few minutes, fill it out, let us know what you thought about it, and uh, it helps us improve. So I uh, thank you all for spending some time tonight. I know it's a beautiful evening, and you still have some time to get out there and enjoy it. And beautiful Michigan weather. Uh, thank you all for being here with us, and have a great rest of your evening. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah.